Good evening, it's 9 p.m. here in Lorville, and you're watching Stanton Today. Let's start by talking about upcoming changes in our news network. The HBN headquarters have had most of its staff incapacitated by a mysterious disease. We have been quarantined for weeks trying to figure out our next move. Hurston Broadcast Network have had some changes in personnel, even though our news team is still intact. Because of the changes to other teams, the future will bring me and my team some new challenges. Hurston Dynamics have pushed funds towards getting our network up and running again, and in an effort to report the news and at the same time respecting the quarantine, HBN have used those funds to rent a number of ships for us to use as studio space. This is a temporary solution until the quarantine has been lifted. Invictus Launch Week, also known as Fleet Week, is around the corner. The seven-day long show held by the UEE Navy usually starts sometime between Emancipation Day and Armistice Day, and this year is no different. Well, one difference is that this year's Fleet Week is moving into Bevic Convention Center, where different manufacturers will treat visitors to test flights and other surprises. See you in the BBC, in the BCC, on our Corp come May 22nd. The secondary vote for Imperatorship is now complete. The results were presented last week, with few surprises. Transitionalist Senator Mira Nego moves on to the final votes, eagerly cheered on by hopeful Terence and Tavarin. Senator Nego has throughout her campaign firmly held on to the transit main issue of moving the Empire capital from Earth to Terra. Many people thought the transits would ease around this issue the further they got in the race, including Nego's own campaign manager, who surprisingly quit her service as she thought the campaign was transforming them into a single-issue party. Senator Nego is also looking to improve legal rights for all and make it easier for Tavarin to establish themselves on the job market. Independent runner Leilani Addison has also made it to the final five, with her agenda mostly focused on increased AI research and improved educational possibilities. She has also throughout her campaign proven to be an empathetic and eloquent speaker that promotes her politics respectfully but with pride and diligence. Former centrist, uh, excuse me, former centralist party leader Paul Lasalle surprisingly managed to win the centralist race for the final vote against Deputy Assistant Director Emma Thorne. This opens up Lasalle to promote himself as being tough on crime, as this was a strong point of Thorne's that Lasalle had difficulties to compete with. Lasalle is also looking to strengthen the UEE's military power as well as allowing for expanded prospecting of areas now protected by the Fair Chance Act. The fourth candidate to emerge from the secondary voting is Universalist High Secretary Ileana Sharad. Universalists say it makes sense that Ileana Sharad is moving on to the final voting as she under imperated Kustigan has proven to be a skilled and accomplished politician. Sharad has led many successful infrastructural projects around the Empire and she promises to keep improving infrastructure should she be elected Imperator. For voters who are happy with Imperator Kostigan, Sharad in the, in the Imperator seat would also mean a political climate very close to Kostigan's. The last and perhaps most surprising candidate to make it to the final vote is the sitting Imperator's own son, Universalist runner Titus Kostigan. This has been a thorn in the side for the Universalist party as Titus splits the votes with uh, Sharad, the party's main candidate. Party members say this is unfortunate as they risk losing the imperatorship with having two candidates split between Universalist wo votes. Titus has been very careful to make critiques or even push his own political agenda. Some say it is because he doesn't have one. Others say he's new to politics and has to get used to how things work. Titus' campaign has revolved around him being an accomplished businessman and that he has the opportunity to closely observe uh, what the Imperatorship means for the past 10 years. The final vote for the Imperator seat starts in October. That's all for tonight. I'm Oliver Zark, and you are wiser than yesterday. Good night.